सो हे व्हाट्सअप गाईज वेलकम बॅक टू अवर यूट्यूब चॅनल सो हा वाय यू आय होप यू ऑल आर डुईंग ग्रेट अँड फाईन सो इन दिस व्हिडिओ वी आर गोना सी वॉट इफ नॉर टू हॅड अ एबिलिटी ऑफ डिस्ट्रक अँड हिल हिमसेल्फ सो दिस इज पार्ट वन अँड इफ यू वॉन्ट मोर दॅन प्लीज लिव अ लाईक सबस्क्राईब अँड शेअर विथ युअर फ्रेंड सो विदाउट एनी मोर वेस्टिंग टाईम लेस गेट इन द व्हिडिओ before that if uh, you can follow me on instagram so link in a description so you can check it out let's get in the video it was a day like any other in the leaf village as naruto made his way to team 7's usual meeting place so far the blonde had followed his normal routine he woke up ate about a week's supply of ramen gathered and checked his ninja gear set off for the bridge and ignored the several glares that the villagers sent his way as he approached his destination the next item in naruto's list was to shout Sakura Chan to greet his female teammate leaning against the bridge's rail Sakura sighed in annoyance great not only is Sasuke come late today but now i'm left all alone with Naruto the pink-haired girl ranted in her mind what do you want Naruto she asked not bothering to keep her distaste away from her words catching the aversion in the Kanoichi's words the blonde genin stopped in his tracks she's angry did i do something to make her mad the nervous jinchuriki wondered Knowing it was too early to get on Sakura's bad side, Naruto looked for a topic that would appease her or at least distract her. So where Sasuke? At the mention of her crush, the pink-haired girl's demeanor completely changed. I don't know, she solemnly informed. He usually gets here before I do. I just hope that everything is all right. Sakura commented before going silent. The two shinobi stayed in awkward silence for what seemed to be an eternity, though in reality it was merely 2 hours. Suddenly, a cloud of smoke burst out in the middle of the bridge, revealing Kakashi and Sasuke as it dissipated. "Yo," the copy ninja nonchalantly greeted. "You're late." Naruto immediately screamed at his sensei, still following his routine. Meanwhile, Sakura made her way towards the Ichiha. "Sasuke-kun, where were you?" "I was starting to get worried," the Kanoichi asked with genuine concern. Unfortunately for the young girl, her crush simply grunted an incoherent answer and walked past her. Sorry for the delay, guys, but I was having some trouble trying to find Sasuke Kakashi apologized as he scratched the back of his head sheepishly. Liar came the immediate retort from the raven-haired boy. You told me to wait at the entrance of the Ichiha compound. I had to stand there for almost 3 hours. The young Sharingan user said, clearly angry and annoyed at the wait. The silver-haired Jaun and cleared his throat. Anyways, setting that aside, the copy ninja dismissed the issue. I called all of you out here to talk about a very important matter concerning the Chunin exam. I have already started discussing this with Sasuke Kakashi explained. The Jinchuriki's eyes set on his teacher the moment the words Chunin exam were uttered. I wanted to talk to you about that too, Kakashi sensei. The blonde genin exclaimed excitedly. You see, I don't think I have learned enough to try taking the exam. The spiky-haired boy admitted as he scratched the back of his head in embarrassment. So, I was wondering if maybe you could teach me some new jutsu, but only because my offensive arsenal is pretty limited with only Kage Bunshin. The young leaf nin explained his position, congratulating himself for the eloquent request. Now Kakashi felt ashamed. How could he continue with what he was about to say after hearing his student's earnest request? Nevertheless, this was something he had to do. He owed as much to his fallen teammate At that moment, the silver-haired man could not have possible imagined that his decision would ripple into a wave that will thunder throughout the Shinobi world. "I'm sorry, Naruto, but I can't." He answered, looking away from his orange-clad student. "I'll be training Sasuke for the time until the exam starts. He just awakened his Sharingan, and I'm the only one that can instruct him on how to use it properly." The copy ninja explained. Naruto's eyes winded in disbelief at his teacher's words. "Boo, but what about Sakura and me?" We need training as much as Sasuke does. The blonde shouted, unable to comprehend his sensei's reasoning. Kakashi's guilt grew exponentially. How could he break the next piece of news to his young student when it would probably break him? But there was no way around it. Sakura the Jaun and turned to face his female student as the sight of his trembling blonde charge became unbearable. You don't have to worry about your training. He did not have to look at Naruto to know of the renewed shock that invaded him. I talk with Kurunai San, and she has agreed to teach you since her students are all training with their respective clans. The Sharingan user informed solemnly. All four leaf nins remained silent. 
Sasuke had already known how tense the situation was going to be, but it was already proving too much, and the Achiha had no option but to look away from his teammate and stare into the water below the bridge. Sakura, though she was happy that she was going to receive training from one of the top kanoichi that Kanahagakur had to offer, could not help but feel sorry for Naruto. The fact that their teacher had not said a word from quite a few minutes led the Haruno towards one conclusion. But but he cannot leave Naruto without training. I mean, the choice is obvious between him and Sasuke, but still, Kakashi-sensei is supposed to look after the training for all three of us. Her mind raged. After what had felt like an eternity, Naruto mustered enough courage to break the silence. Kakashi-sensei and what about me? The blonde asked, not sure if he wanted to hear the answer. The silver-haired man's eye fell on the spiky-haired boy. Truthfully, it pained a down in doing this to his energetic student, but the decision had been made for him years ago on that collapsing cave. I am sorry, but I owed it to Ibido the man reasoned. Naruto you just need to practice your chakra control, work on your tojutsu, and I'm sure that you will do great in the Chunin exam. Kakashi said, failing miserably to sound reassuring. Knowing that there was no way that he could do any more damage to his young charge short of stabbing him in the heart with a kunai, the copy nin dismissed himself and left his students to sort their minds. Staying in the bridge for a couple of minutes after his teacher's departures, Sasuke glanced at the broken blonde on his way out. The words I'm sorry fought to come out of the Achiha's mouth, but they failed, and the young Sharingan user simply walked away with his eyes set towards the ground. On the other hand, the concern Sakura was feeling towards the spiky-haired boy was becoming unbearable. It was not as though she liked the loud, annoying, clumsy, and fashionably challenged boy, but seeing him now so weak, quiet, and dim. How could Kakashi-sensei do this to Naruto? Yeah, he might be a little rough to work with, but he still needs proper training. She thought. Deciding it was best to head for the safety of his apartment before he broke down in front of Sakura. Naruto turned around and started to prepare himself to leave when he felt a soft hand on his shoulder. Naruto are you alright? Sakura asked with genuine concern. On cue, a fake smile plastered itself in the blonde's face as he turned around to face the pink-haired girl. Of course I'm alright, Sakura-chan. The boy lied as he gave her his trademark grin. You heard Kakashi-sensei, I'm so good that I can train by myself and still amaze everyone at the exam with my incredible skills he stated. Not buying the answer that she received, the Kanoichi pressed on. Are you sure? The fake grin forcefully widened. Yeah, don't concern yourself with me, Sakura-chan. I'm fine. The genin responded. If you say so the Haruno said defeated. Smiling gratefully at the small affection he had being shown, Naruto gave his teammate the closest thing to a true smile he could muster at the moment. Well, I have to go now. See you later, Sakura-chan. The spiky-haired shinobi exclaimed before he ran off. Sakura remained in the bridge for a couple of minutes until she could not see Orange anymore. Sighing heavily and wishing both of her absent teammates the best of luck, the girl started heading home. Naruto continued to run past his apartment. The Jinchuriki ran and ran for several minutes until his energy finally gave out and he was left walking slowly. The blonde was still trying to grasp the idea that his teacher had just simply abandoned him so that he could train his prodigy student. As the genin continued to wander throughout the village, his gaze was directed solely towards the ground. He could not see anything else, he did not want to see anything else, because if he so much as looked at his sides, or even front and back, the only thing that he would see would be the angry and condemning gazes of the villagers glaring at him. They did not need to say anything to express their opinion of the young Jinchuriki, their eyes revealed everything. The blonde could not take it anymore. Forcing his body, Naruto started running once again. The spiky-haired boy moved towards the village's gate as fast as his feet would take him. The young shinobi would not dare to actually walk away from the village, but he just needed to get away from the villagers' spiteful glares, even if it was just for a moment. The instant he breathed the fresh air outside the village's walls, the blonde already felt better. There was no hostility plaguing his surroundings, just tranquility, so the spiky-haired boy decided to take a walk around the forest surrounding Kanoha. As long as the boy did not wander in too deep, he would be alright. After a couple of hours simply wandering, Naruto decided to sit and relax under the shade of a tree. It's still early. I can take a nap for a few minutes and go back to the village before the gates are closed off. The blonde reasoned. With his decision made, the young shinobi closed his eyes and wandered off into a deep slumber.
The dream started like any other. The blonde had to brave his way through dungeons of libraries and classrooms, rescue Sakura from the evil vegetable army, and was rewarded by becoming king of the Raymond Kingdom. Suddenly, Naruto dream changed dramatically. The joyous illusion that his mind had conjured was corrupted by memories of his childhood. The genin found himself in his five-year-old body being insulted, chazzed, kicked, beaten, and even burned by the villagers. The young man's nightmare seemed to focus on a particular painful incident. It was his fifth birthday, and the spiky-haired boy had committed the grave error of leaving the security of his apartment to go to the store and buy some ramen. As the young boy stepped out of his apartment and headed towards the store, some of the villagers spotted and, before the child could even realize, a mob gathered. It was only until he reached the store that the boy became aware of the angry mass of villagers coming towards him. Knowing too well what his fate would be if the crowd caught up to him, the blonde forgot all about his business in the store and started off in a mad dash back towards his home. Sadly, the villagers ran after him and caught up to him soon enough. Before he knew it, the spiky-haired boy was totally surrounded by a wall of hatred. The killer intent permeating the surrounding was as strong as any wars. The five-year-old stood completely terrified in the middle of it all. W-Y. Why do you hate me so much? The little blonde cried. Shut up demon. Someone shouted from the angry mob. It's time for you to pay for what you did to the village. A man exclaimed and the crowd roared in agreement. And so, the beating began. They punched, kicked, and even threw rocks at the small blonde. In a matter of seconds, the little boy's body was reduced to a bloody mass. Looking up, to his horror, the beaten child could see that some of his aggressors were actually shinobi from the village, the people that were supposed to protect everyone. Naruto's vision became blurry and soon all that he could see was crimson. Fortunately, before the red turned to black, the boy heard a voice shouting angrily over the mob. Stop. Forcing one of his eyes to focus, the boy was barely able to register the Hokage silhouette standing before the dissipating crowd. The genin woke up with a start as tears ran down his cheeks. Shaking his nightmare off, the boy looked at his surroundings and realized that he had slept for longer than he had intended to. The forest around the young man was already dark. Deciding that it would be best to hurry toward the village before the gate closed and he was left outside the wall, Naruto started off. The young shinobi had only taken a few steps before his body was left paralyzed by an incredibly strong presence nearby. The spiky-haired boy immediately got into a fighting stance. Whoever was nearby sure had a very menacing chakra. The noise coming from the trees let the Jinchuriki know that whoever was there, he was aware that his presence was no longer a secret and did not seem to care. Hearing steps behind him, Naruto turned around to meet the owner of the terrifying chakra. It is nice to finally get a chance to meet you, Naruto-kun. It is nice to finally get a chance to meet you, Naruto-kun. The young shinobi immediately turned around. Sasuke? The Jinchuriki questioned the figure standing before him. No it can't be Sasuke. This guy his presence is frightening. Naruto thought. Still, the appearance of the person in front of the genin was eerily similar to Sasuke's, with identical onyx color hair and a face that would make the girls go crazy. Taking a closer look, the blonde realized several different aspects that prove his first theory wrong. The newcomer was taller than Sasuke, had two long streaks between his eyes, and, perhaps the most apparent feature for the spiky-haired boy, a scratched leaf headband. There was no way that this person was Sasuke. Oh. The man's voice snapped Naruto out of his thoughts. I'm sorry, but I'm not my dear little brother, the stranger added with an amused tone. The genin's eyes widened at the new revelation. Brother? Wait a minute. Naruto Sasuke said weakly after been caught by his teammate. He he's still out there my brother the wounds that Haku had inflicted on him seemed to be making it hard for the Uchiha to even breathe. I promised myself that I would stay alive until I kill him Naruto, don't let your dream die. This was him. The person who Sasuke wanted to kill so much, he had ended up killing his own personality. My name is Uchiha Itachi the missing nin casually presented himself, he was wearing a black cloak with a pattern of red clouds around it, while a fully matured Sharingan shined ominously in his eyes. You have no idea how long I wanted to meet you, Naruto-kun. The young man added. At those words, the blonde took a step back. How do you know who I am? The young shinobi asked. The black-haired man simply regarded the boy before him for a couple of seconds. Oh. I know more about you than you may think, Jinshuriki of the Kaiubi no Kitsune. Itachi revealed with a hint of amusement. Naruto's eyes widened in shock. 
even if the man in front of him had once been a leaf nin once, he was too young to have fought the Kyubi during its original attack on the village, which meant that the knowledge of the fox's true fate should have been kept a secret from him. For the expression in your face, I can infer that you already know of the existence of the Biju inside of you, the young man let out a sound that resembled a short laugh. Figures that they would break their own law. The Ichiha commented. Narrowing his eyes at the older shinobi, Naruto's anger started to get the best of him. So what if I know? He asked. What's it to you? The black-haired man gave the faintest of shrugs. I do not really care if they told you or not Itachi confessed. What I am more interested in is in how much of the Biju's power you can control. The missing nin added. Control? The Jinchuriki thought as his eyes widened once again. What the hell does he mean by that? His mind ranted in confusion. The spiky-haired boy could remember the power boost he had received from his contact with the fox's chakra during his battle with Haku, but he could not even begin to imagine that such thing could be controlled. The pair of Sharingan eyes continued to analyze the young shinobi. It seems that you have already been able to tap into the Kyubi's chakra. Itachi correctly commented, finding some amusement in the blonde's surprised face. Those who truly knew Itachi would know that he having more fun than he had in years. That is good, you are already starting to develop your abilities and begun growing into your role as Jinchuriki, and with the Kyubi as your biju, you will truly become a powerful one. The Ichiha finished. Inside his head, Naruto brain was review the missing nin's words over and over again, but he just could not understand. What the hell do you mean by my role as Jinchuriki? The boy questioned when he could not formulate an answer by himself. A sigh escaped the black-haired man, but decided to ease the genin's confusion. Jinchurigi means human sacrifice. It is a testament to how far the hidden villages are willing to go to secure power. The Sharingan user began explaining. They are willing to doom one of their own into a life of isolation and hatred, simply for a chance to harness the Biju's power and turn a human into a weapon. Naruto remained silent after the older shinobi's words. So that's what I and his gaze dropped to the floor. A human sacrifice meant to become a weapon he said with a low whisper. Yes. Itachi curtly confirmed. And now that that's clear, I am going to ask you to come with me. The former leaf nin said, knowing that from here on out things will get more complicated. Immediately, the blonde's disposition changed into a defensive one. What what do you mean coming with you? The spiky haired boy questioned as he took several steps back. Another sigh escaped the missing nin. You see, Naruto-kun I am part of an organization called Akatsuki. He explained nonchalantly. And it is in the organization's best interests to come to Konoha and collect you. The Ichiha added. Normally we work in pairs, but my partner had a little detour and could not make it tonight. The young man spoke as if he were discussing his favorite onajiri recipe. I was supposed to wait until he came back to secure you, but fortunately you decided to take a walk around the forest after hours, just to make it easier for me, I thank you for that. He finished. As a defense mechanism, the genin shot back. What? Are you so weak that you need a bodyguard just to enter the village? Naruto exclaimed as fear and dread invaded his mind and clouded his judgment. Itachi decided to play along. No, it is not that, I simply would like to carry out missions with the least trouble possible. He answered as his Sharingan bored into the younger shinobi. And it is notably difficult to sneak into a village where you once slaughtered one of its most prominent clans. The missing nin said with a small smirk. Especially when it was you own. The revelation sent the Jinchuriki into a world of shock. The spiky-haired boy had heard that the Achiha clan had been massacred in a single night, but he had never imagined that the culprit had been a single person. So so you're the reason why the Achiha clan is no more, that's why Sasuke wants to kill you. The terrified blonde stated. The small smirk became slightly more marked. Yes the young man moved his upper body faintly forwards, as if giving spiky-haired boy a small bow. Ichiha Itachi, at your service suddenly, a frightening killer intent permeated the surroundings. Immediately, the younger shinobi turned around and started off towards the village. Naruto could not hear the missing nin's footsteps behind him, but he could feel the killer intent catching up with him, getting closer and closer for every step forward that the blood took. Unexpectedly, the presence behind a blonde vanished. At the moment of false security, Naruto committed a grave error. Stopping his mad dash towards the village's gates, the spiky-haired boy looked around trying to find where his pursuer had disappeared to. All of a sudden, the genin felt a hand grab him by the collar, and, before the boy knew what had happened, his body was violently pinned against a tree. 
Okay, Naruto-kun, now is time for you to come with me. Itachi said as his figure appeared right in front of the boy. Like hell I will. The Jinchuriki responded. Naruto flailed his legs trying to kick the Ichiha, but none of his kicks seemed to make contact. With an impressive display of physical strength, the black-haired man threw the blonde towards another tree. The blonde hit the trunk with a sickening impact and fell to the ground. When he finally looked up, Azure eyes met the Sharingan. Right in front of the Genin, the Ichiha's Dejutsu started to transform. In each eye, the black coma seemed to change and come together until they formed what looked like a three-pointed shuriken. The only thing that Naruto was able to hear was the word Tsukiyomi being uttered with Itachi's voice before he was unexpectedly tied up to the tree's trunk and his surroundings completely changed. What the hell just happened? He thought. Where's that bastard? What is this place? The boy questioned as he looked around one more time. The large number for trees in Kanoha's forest had been severely scaled down, and the few that remained were all black and dead, and the dark night sky had been completely covered by a blood crimson color. Suddenly, several figures of Itachi appeared surrounding the Jinchuriki. The forms were completely black, except for the crimson color of their odd Sharingan eyes. Welcome to the Tsukiyomi world, Naruto-kun. The Itachi right in front of the spiky-haired boy said. This is a jutsu that can only be created with these he took a moment to point at his strange jutsu. The Manjiku Sharingan, the ultimate form of the Ichiha bloodline. The former leaf nin informed. Naruto simply remained silent, paralyzed by fear and dread. Now, this jutsu might only last for a second the black-haired man continued, ignoring the younger shinobi's terror. But take my word for it, it can feel like days. He added with a mocking tone. Since the Tsukiyomi world gave its caster complete control over reality the Ichiha said as raised one of his hands and a crow suddenly flew down and landed on it. The bounded blonde watched in shock as the raven in the missing nin's hand suddenly turned into a kunai and then into a katana. You are at my mercy for the next three days Itachi said, his tone getting darker with every word. Naruto's eyes completely filled with terror. He was trapped inside a strange and frightening word controlled by a man who had killed his entire family in cold blood. Even his childhood beating seemed like a fond memory compared to his current situation. Now the Achiha's voice snapped the genin back into attention. From what I have gathered, your teammates are my foolish littler brother and that pink-haired girl that was all over him, right? And Kakashi-senpai is your Jounin instructor, am I wrong? The young man asked. I am really disappointed of him, only looking after two of his students and leaving one of them without any form of training whatsoever he commented, letting his target know under how much surveillance he had been under. Gritting his teeth at his captor's words, Naruto's gaze fell on the floor. A faint smirk appeared in Itachi's face. Do you want to know why he did that, Naruto-kun? The black-haired man asked. Suddenly, another Itachi appeared right next to the restricted Jinchuriki, leaning closer to the boy's ear so that the genin could barely hear him whisper. Because he hates you all of them hate you. In an instant, Itachi and all of his replicas disappeared and three new figures started to emerge from the ground, taking the form of Kakashi, Sasuke, and Sakura, and each holding a kunai in hand. The three clones stood in front of the captured Naruto and remained silent for a whole several minutes before Kakashi finally stepped forward. It is time for you to pay for what you did to the village, demon. The blonde heard his sensei's voice exclaimed, echoing his nightmare. Ka Kakashi Sen. Before the blonde could finish, the fake Jounin stabbed him in the gut with his kunai. Grarg. The Jinchuriki screamed as the very real pain permeated his entire body. Panting heavily as his blood started to flow down to the ground, the young boy forced his head up to gaze at the figures of his teammates. Sasuke saw Sakura he let out. The first to move was the black-haired boy. Everybody in the village hates you. We would all be better off if you just died. The Ichiha proclaimed before his kunai impaled the blonde. Naruto's eyes were blinded for a few seconds, the genin didn't know if it was because of the horrifying pain that plagued his body or from the terrible scream he let out due to said pain. Struggling with his blurry eyesight, the Jinchuriki could barely discern a red and pink figure approaching him. No not you too he said weakly. Sakura's clone simply glared at the blonde in response. You have no idea how sickening it has been having to deal with you every day. She stated. I despise you with all of my heart. Do us all a favor and I already. The pink-haired girl shouted before stabbing the boy in his chest, inches away from his crumbling heart. Jairg. The young Jenin's cry resounded through the crimson sky. 
panting through the echo of his own screams, Naruto could not even find enough strength to raise his head again. Why? Why why do you hate me this much? The broken blonde questioned. Tears ran down his sorrowful face and mixed with his blood in the ground. Soon, the piercing pain of the kunais returned time and time again. Die. I thought you cared for me. Disappear. I never did anything. Why do you just die? Please. We hate you. Please stop. There will never be a place for you in the village. Stop. We can't wait for your death. Stop I I can't take it anymore. Don't you see? A dark and twisted version of Kakashi's boy said. We don't care about you, we never did, all that we want is for you to die and rot in hell. Through pained cries and sobs, Naruto shook his head. No the whisper was barely audible. The stabs came in even faster, accompanied by the calls for the Jinchuriki's death by the three attackers. As the torture continued, time became irrelevant, truth became twisted, the assailant shouts became enhanced and hypnotic, and pain became overwhelming and all-consuming, until. Stop. As if something had been ripped right from the fabric of the Tsukuyomi world, a powerful shockwave spread throughout the surroundings, and the captured blonde was covered by light blue chakra. Out of sight, a faint smirk formed in Itachi's face as he watched the genin's chakra gradually turning orange and growing stronger with each passing second. Finally he's starting to draw out the fox's chakra. The former leaf nin reasoned as he continued to observe the situation develop. Garg. Naruto thoughts were torrential. The biju's chakra was running rampant throughout his body and, with every passing moment, the blonde could feel an overpowering hatred building up inside of him. Kit. A new voice broke through the boy's turmoil. Calm down. You're absorbing too much chakra at an alarming rate, Kit. The voice sounded scared and desperate. Calm down. It repeated its plea, but it was left unheard as the Jinchuriki's chakra pole suddenly became stronger. Already completely surrounded by the terrifying orange chakra, the genin was hyperventilating, feeling that his body would be crushed by the pressure of the sudden power surge until. Gyerg. With a sudden spike of power, Naruto's chakra burst, taking a dark blue color, and blowing all of this teammate's figures away. I hate you I hate you all. He screamed as his power continued to increase. Sharingan eyes widened in surprise. Incredible, he was able to subjugate Kyubi's chakra, and his killer intent has become terrifyingly powerful. The Achiha thought in amazement. I will destroy everything. Everything. The boy continued screaming. With each shout, the Tsukuyomi world's crimson sky flashed back to normal. Worry started to seep into the missing Nin. How is it possible? He is actually breaking through Tsukuyomi the black-haired man's mind raged. The Jinjuriki could feel the power building up inside of him. This world can go to hell. Naruto proclaimed, and with one more chakra spike, he sent an even more powerful shockwave blowing the Tsukuyomi world and its caster away. The Sharingan user found himself back in the forest of Kanoha, with a cloud of dust hovering in front of him, where his target had previously stood. Scanning the chaos of small debris as the dust began to settle, Itachi could see the genin's figure started to become visible. Naruto stood in the middle of a small crater gazing up at the sky, his eyes looking through the clouds and setting on a bright and imposing moon. Ever so slowly, the Jinchuriki's eyes lowered and focused on the former leaf nin in front of him. The Ichiha's Sharingan eyes widened in shock at the sight before them. Impossible there is no way. He muttered. How can he? Naruto stood in the middle of a small crater gazing up at the sky, his eyes looking through the clouds and setting on a bright and imposing moon. Ever so slowly, the Jinchuriki's eyes lowered and focused on the former leaf nin in front of him. The Ichiha's Sharingan eyes widened in shock at the sight before them. Impossible there is no way. He muttered. How can he? Itachi's eyes gazed directly into the genins. The blonde's eyes no longer held their shining sapphire hue. Instead, just like the boy's chakra, they had taken a dramatically darker tone into navy blue. Still, the most surprising and prominent features presented in Naruto's gaze were the three white commas, accompanied by a white dot that appeared in both eyes. How can he have a Sharingan? The Akatsuki member questioned in astonishment. Snapping out of his trance at the older shinobi's voice, Naruto's mind tried to process what the missing nin's words had meant. Sharingan what is he talking about? The Jinchuriki looked at the surroundings, and he immediately sensed something was odd. To the young blonde's eyes, it was as if everything around him was in slow motion. Not a singly detail escaped the boy's gaze, from the fluttering leaves to the swaying branches, his eyes were capturing anything and everything. 
A couple of feet away Itachi was finally starting to recover from the shock brought about by the new development. This certainly complicates things his manjiku narrowing as he reanalyzed the situation. No matter what, I must act quickly now, otherwise the black-haired man murmured to himself. Naruto had already completely forgotten about the missing nin that had been torturing him a few moments ago. Instead, the blonde's eyes gazed around in a new trance. When his eyes finally caught sight of the strangely shaped Sharingan once again, the Jinchuriki heard the word that had ignited his hell. Tsukiyomi. Immediately, the sky above the genin started to change. Dread started to seep into the young boy at the idea of spending any more time that dark and cruel world, but no matter how much he searched his mind, he could not think of a way to stop the Jinjutsu. Kit, your eyes. Send chakra to your eyes now. A voice thundered inside Naruto's head. The Jinjuriki was taken back by the sudden intrusion of his thoughts. Who are you? The boy asked. Why are you in my head? Despite not getting any answer, the blonde decided to worry about it later and follow the voice's advice nevertheless and channeled chakra towards his eyes. Suddenly, some sort of flash of light went off in the clearing and Itachi found himself being thrown backwards, his back soon hitting a tree. What? The Ichiha's mind raged. Did the fox do this? He wondered as he looked at the leaf nin standing in front of him. No only another manjiku could throw off the Tsukiyomi so easily the shocked missing nin reasoned. The new turn of events filled the blonde with confidence. Deciding to go into the offensive, Naruto took out a kunai and charged towards the black-haired man. Letting his trained reflexes take control, Itachi immediately took out a kunai of his own and brought it forward to block the incoming attack. Both blade clashed with each other and sent a small shockwave through their surroundings. Because of his smaller size, Naruto was thrown back by the backlash of the impact, but landed safely on his beat, while Itachi simply lost his balance and fell back against the tree again. Damn it. My chakra is already running low after using Tsukiyomi the former Konoha Shinobi thought. Damn you, kiss him you were supposed to be here be here, you know how important this is. The Ichiha thought of his partner somewhere in the land of waves, paying his respects to the grave of an old comrade. Fighting back the growing fatigue, Itachi stood up once more and straightened his cloak. Well, Naruto-kun, this truly is an unexpected turn of events, you having the Sharingan, I mean. The Ichiha said casually. To say it is complicated my plans would be an understatement. A small ominous smirk appeared on the young man's face. Despite the nonchalant tone of the missing nin's words, the Jinshuriki could not help but still be unnerved by the cloaked nin's mere presence. A dark snicker escaped the black-haired shinobi at the sight of the blonde taking a wary step back. How about we leave your capture for another day? The smirk grew as the genin strained Sharingan widened. I will see you soon, Naruto kun with those words, Itachi's body turned completely black and dissipated as a group of ravens, leaving a confused and astonished boy behind. Once he was unable to feel the Ichiha's presence, Naruto let go of a heavy breath and fell into the ground. Looking up at the top of the trees, once again contemplating how the leaves still seemed to be moving at slow motion. Several minutes passed until the Jinchuriki jumped back onto his beat and made his way towards the village. In his first stroke of luck in the whole day, the genin made it back to the gates, just as they were about to close them off. The guards pay him no mind, and he was careful not to do anything that might attract attention towards himself as he passed by them. Once officially inside the village, the boy jumped on top of a building and started to leap from roof to roof as he tried to organize his chaotic thoughts. After a couple of minutes of hopping around, Naruto finally stopped. The blonde knew that it had not been his teammates who tortured and attacked him inside the world created by the weird Jinjutsu, but, even though most of what the illusions had seen had been false, at least some of it was true. The village saw him as nothing more than a demon, a social pariah, a target for all of their hatred. Who knows, after what he had seen earlier in the day, perhaps his teammates would truly react like that if they ever found out what he was, if they found out what dwelled inside of him. With his current instability, there were only two persons that Naruto still felt he could really trust. Taking a deep breath, the Jinchuriki turned around and started off towards the Hokage's building to find one of them. Saratobi Hiruzen, Sandame Hokage, sat on his desk glaring at a mountain of paperwork, courtesy of the upcoming Chunin exams. Suddenly, the aged shinobi felt an exceptionally large chakra reading coming straight towards his office at an alarming speed. Before the third could leave his seat, the window in one side of the room snapped upon, and an orange blur stepped into the room. The village leader would have attacked the intruder immediately were not for the familiar voice whispering old man. 
The Hokage's eyes widened in surprise. Naruto-kun, is that you? What brings you to my office at this hour? He questioned, managing to compose himself right away. Upon further observation of the young shinobi, Saratobi was left speechless at the even bigger surprise that greeted him. Naruto your eyes the third whispered. A pair of blue and white Sharingan eyes looked from the older leaf nin onto the floor. So it is true Naruto commented. The Jinchuriki started to look around the room until he found a small mirror and walked towards it. The sight that greeted the genin was that of a blonde young man with a pair of blue and white Sharingan eyes. The fully developed Jutsu shined with an ominous luster and pools of night blue color. Naruto kun the Sandame's word snapped the spiky haired boy out of his thoughts. Please, tell me what happened. The older shinobi requested. The Jinjuriki spent the next hour telling the Hokage everything that had happened to him on that day, from Team 7's meeting by the bridge, to his trip out of the village, the encounter with the missing Ninichiha Itachi, and culminating with him rejecting the Tsukiyomi Jinjutsu. Everything was laid bare in front of the leader of Konohagakur. By the end of his tale, Saratobi looked the oldest that Naruto had ever seen him. The old man's breath was labored, and the tears that threatened to spill only complemented his pained expression. Naruto had to look away. He really did not like to see his Hokage looking so weak and feeble. But what I don't understand the spiky-haired boy started again. Is how do I have the Sharingan? He brought into question. The third sighed and took a minute to compose himself. I am truly sorry, Naruto-kun, for I have kept much from you. The seasoned shinobi informed before standing up from his chair and walking towards a drawer. I never imagined that something like this would happen he commented as he searched the drawer until he pulled out a blue folder from it. Saratobi walked back to his desk and sat down. The genin quietly waited as the aged man regarded the blue folder for several minutes before the Hokage opened it, took out a photograph, and gave it to him. Looking down at the picture, a pair of Sharingan eyes widened. It was a picture of a young woman wearing a red variant of the Kanoha Jounin's uniform, and she was the most beautiful being that the Leaf Nin had ever seen. She had alabaster skin that contrasted with her long and dark onyx hair, and a vibrant smile that would light up the darkest and stormiest of days. Naruto didn't know why, but for some reason he could not stop the tears that ran down his face as he gazed at the photo. Her name is Achiha Kagam. Saratobi's voice cut through the blonde's trance. She was one of the Leaf's most promising kanoichi. He said with a mix of pride and nostalgia. Her exploits during the last war earned her the name of the Achiha's Crimson Raven, due to her mastery over the Sharingan and her tendency of using crows as a theme for her jutsus, especially jinjutsus. The Sandame seemed lost in a memory. Yes she was especially skilled in jinjutsu. She could easily fool an entire room filled with member of the Achiha and Hayuga clan, and no one would ever realize it. Naruto's eyes narrowed. She was. The aged shinobi closed his eyes for a second. Yes he sorrowfully answered. She died the day the Kaiubi no Kitsune attacked after giving birth to her son. Saratobi's eyes said on the young genin as the boys widened. She is your mother, Naruto-kun he revealed. Out of sheer surprise, the younger shinobi had to take a step back. What do you mean my mother? I'm not an Achiha. I don't even look like one. The boy protested as his eyes glared at the Hokage's. The Sandane gaze dropped to the floor momentarily, before moving up towards the portraits of the previous Hoka gaze. Yes, you do not look like a member of the Achiha clan, but that is because you inherited your physical traits from your father, Namakas Minato, the Yandame Hoka Gay. Saratobi stated. Naruto's eyes almost doubled in size as they widened. The fourth. Is my father? He exclaimed, unable to believe what he was hearing. The third nodded. Yes few people knew of the relationship between Minato and Kagam, and even less people knew that they were expecting a child. The village leader informed. After you were born and became an orphan, we thought it would be safer to give you another name. Your parents already had their share of enemies, and the child of an elite Chiha and a Hokage would not go unnoticed by the shinobi world. So, in order to protect you, you became Yuzumaki Naruto. Saratobi said his guilt hung strongly onto his voice. He had a dull and mirthless laugh escaped the blonde. I always wondered about my parents the boy confessed. I came to think that perhaps I never had any, and instead I just sprout right out of the ground. The tears that ran down his cheeks framed his frail and fake smile. But I guess that I did have parents, even if it was for only an hour or so. Saratobi would not have been surprised if his eyes were crying too. Yes you did, Naruto-kun. He started. And both of them loved you with all of their hearts. The aged man assured the young boy. 
Kagam put her life on the line to bring you into this world, and Minato gave up his to create a seal that would allow the Kyubi's chakra to flow into you so that it would protect you. The Dhrid gave the spiky haired Jen in a couple of minutes to let his words sink in. Their last wish was for you to grow up into a strong and healthy man that would be able to accomplish any and all of his dreams. I was planning to tell you all of this once you were ready, and I am sorry I did not realize that you have been for a long time now. The Hokage stressed his apology by giving the blonde a small bow. Another smile formed on the Jinchuriki's face, and, though small, this one stronger and brighter. Even if he didn't fully show it, the young man was the happiest he had been ever since he became a shinobi. The knowledge of who his parents had been and the fact that he was truly loved by them filled the gen in with warmth. Still, somewhere in his joy, something captured boy's attention. Hold on a second, old man. The blonde said. You mentioned that you never expected that I would awaken the Sharingan, why is that? He questioned. The Hokage sighed, he knew that the this question was fast approaching. Well, you see, the Namakas and Ichiha bloodlines are too dominant. They tend to overpower any other genetic traits that they come in contact with. The idea that the two bloodlines would found a middle ground in compromise with each other was unthinkable. The third watched as the spiky-haired boy brought a hand to his eyes. So, when I looked at you for the first time and saw that you were the spitting image of your father, I thought that the Namaka's bloodline had won out. Naruto nodded in acknowledgement at the explanation. So this Sharingan is. It was the Sandame's turn to nod. Prove that I was wrong, and that the Achiha and Namaka's trait somehow found a way to fuse together. Saratobi stated. From what you told me, I think that it is safe to infer that, when you started to forcibly drain the Kyubi of his chakra, it worked as a catalyst that combined the two bloodlines. He explained and waited for the young shinobi to show his understanding. And I even venture the guess that, after what you said happened when Itachi tried to use his Jinjutsu a second time, your Sharingan is showing traits of the Majengu Sharingan, the next step in the Uchiha Jujutsu. A pensive look took over the Jinchuriki's features. Yes Itachi had it a weirdly shaped Sharingan. Naruto pointed out. The Hokage considered his words for a couple of minutes. Do you eyes feel tired, Naruto-kun? He asked, realizing that the young genin must have had his Dijutsu activated since it was first awakened. The Jinchuriki looked at the older shinobi with a confused face. No, not really the boy responded as he shook his head. Do me a favor and please concentrate in cutting off the chakra flow to you eyes, Naruto-kun. The Sandame requested. The village leader watched as the white comas disappeared from the blonde's eyes, and the dark blue color reverted to their original sapphire hue. Naruto blinked several times as the strange slow motion sensation he had been feeling disappeared. Effortlessly shaking off the weird feeling, everything went back to normal for the genin. Saratobi waited for the young man to give him a sign that he was okay before starting again. The Manjikyu Sharingan is a very a very corrosive Kekei Genkai. Even after its first use, the casters are left exhausted, drained of most of their chakra, and actually experiencing physical pain. The fact that you can stand there before me shows that your Sharingan should be able to access the Manjikyu's abilities while bypassing its terrible toll. The young Jinchuriki was genuinely surprised by the revelation, remembering how the fluttering leaves looked through his Sharingan and his escape from Itachi's second try at the strange Jinjutsu. Suddenly, the Hokage stood up from his chair. I have something for you, Naruto-kun, please wait a moment. He announced as he stepped out of the room, leaving the genin alone in the office. Naruto collapsed onto one of the chairs in the room. A lot had happened during the last couple of hours, and the blonde was still letting it sink in. Someday we're having, don't you think so, Kit? At the sound of those words, the leaf nin jumped out of his chair. Who are you? He called out. Heh the laughter sounded very close to the spiky-haired boy. Are you so stupid that you already forgotten what that Mizuki bastard told you, Kit? The voice questioned. The Jinchuriki's eyes widened. The fox? He exclaimed. Since when can you talk to me? The genin asked astonished. Another laugh escaped the biju, but it soon turned sour. Since you severely weakened the seal as you stole most of my chakra. The fox bitterly commented. Talk about hollowed victories, right, Kit? Sapphire eyes narrowed. What do you mean most of your chakra? He asked with caution. I mean just that, idiot. Kaiubi exclaimed inside his head, making the young shinobi cringe. You took almost all of my chakra, and now I'm as dangerous as the monster you thought lived by the vegetable products I led the market. The fox exclaimed. Naruto had to scratch his head at the new revelation. 
So I'm as powerful as you um were? Ha. The sealed Biju laughed. Now, listen here kid and listen well, you may have possession of my chakra, but there is no way in hell that you can control it as you are now. The fox explained. You are just as strong as you were this morning, sans despicable dejutsus of course, the only difference right now is that your colossal chakra supply just got larger. The blonde nodded at the Kyubi's words as he sat down again. Then where do we stand now, regarding your chakra? The one's beard entity took a couple of moments to think the question over. You would still need to learn how to properly tap into it and control it. He informed his host. And believe me when I said this, it is going to be a hard and painful process he <laughs> The Biju added, taking joy at the winds from his jailer. But don't worry, those damn eyes of yours should help you with it. He added, opting to appease the boy a bit. Okay Naruto muttered. But then what's going to happen to you, now that your chakra is gone? The dark laugh that the fox let out did not set too well with the blonde. Oh, worry about me, are you? He teased. It seems that this is it for me. I will be doomed to spend the rest of my life wandering around in this poor excuse of a mind, watching everything that you do, and pointing out all of your flaws. Kaiubi announced a dumbstruck blonde. Think of me as your brand new conscience. The Jinchuriki sighed in frustration through the Biju's laugher. Oh good, I get a new conscience whose idea of a good time is leveling an entire village to the ground the boy thought, renewing the laughter for his tenant. After several minutes passed, Saratobi re-entered the room carrying a couple of scrolls with him. Well Naruto-kun, since Kakashi seems to have neglected your training, I will be taking over. The Hokage announced, allowing himself a small smile at the look of surprise in the Jinin's face. Sadly, I have to deal with some official matters regarding the Chunin exam, meaning that we will not be able to start your training until at least next week, so I am leaving you some homework until then. The Sande added as he placed the scrolls on the table. Naruto could not help himself and, at the mention of the word homework, his mind flashed back to his academy days, causing the Jinchuriki to groan in frustration. Nevertheless, the blonde picked up the scroll closest to him and started looking over it. A small chuckle escaped the Hokage as he separated a group of scrolls from the rest. The scroll that you are reading, along with these, contain information about a couple of jutsus that I thought it would be good for you to learn. He informed before setting aside three other parchments. While these three regard the Achiha clan, a bit of its history, fighting style, special jutsus related to the clan, as well as information about the Sharingan. The spiky-haired boy nodded his understanding of the older shinobi's words. Watching over the scrolls presented in front of him, the blonde's eyes set on the small black scroll that the village leader had kept isolated from the others. And this last one the third continued as he picked the black scroll. Contains information on the Manjikyu Sharingan, as well as instruction on how to use its two special jutsus, Tsukiyomi and Amaterasu, I am particularly inclined for you to learn those two techniques. Saratobi said as he handed the small scroll to his new student. I want you to read all of this material during the last couple of days. You do not have to put it to practical use just yet, but I expect for you to know all this information before we start training, am I clear? He asked. The Jinchuriki nodded to accept his task before he started to gather the scrolls, and the Hokage moved back to his chair. Sitting behind his desk once more, the Sandame regarded the Genin. Now, I want you to consider for a moment before you answer me this question. The experienced shinobi waited until the sapphire orbs fell on him. You are old enough to decide this for yourself do you want me to make your heritage public, Naruto-kun? He asked. The boy's eyes fell to the floor as he pondered. After a several minutes in silence, Naruto lifted his gaze back to the Hokage. No. He said in a determined but solemn voice. Accepting the genin's answer, the third continued. And what about Kakashi? The blonde remained pensive for a while before nodding. How much should I tell him? The blonde sighed as he considered. You can tell him about my parents he finally answered. But not about my Sharingan eye, I don't want him to know about it the spiky haired boy said as his vis tightened. Very well, Naruto-kun. Saratobi said before giving the younger leaf Nina smile. That only leaves us with the matter of your Sharingan. He announced. A confused look was directed towards the village leader. My Sharingan? The genin asked. Nodding, the third smile grew slightly. Yes. From what you told me, your Sharingan differs from any other of its variants, making it a new Dejutsu. The aged man explained. So, as a new Dejutsu, it needs a name. Naruto was taken back by the announcement for a couple of seconds before he started thinking over it. 
Gradually, the young man's eyes drifted towards the open window in the office as he contemplated his dejutsu. Sky the Jinchuriki said before returning his gaze to the Hokage. Sora Sharingan its name is Sora Sharingan. The shinobi declared. The Hokage nodded and smiled warmly once more. The blonde gave his leader a small bow before starting to walk toward the door. Suddenly, the genin stopped on his tracks. Is something wrong, Naruto-kun? Saratobi asked with concern. Sapphire eyes shined brightly as the blonde looked back. No, he said. I just wanted to thank you for everything, old geezer the spiky-haired boy said before giving the older shinobi a true real smile, before turning around and walking out of the office. A sigh escaped the sandame. It is good to see that this terrible ordeal was not able to fully break your vibrant spirit, Naruto-kun. The Hokage whispered to himself as he smiled. The third sat in his office early in the morning. He had sent somebody to look for Kakashi and, knowing him, Hiruzen had at least two hours before he showed up. Sighing, the Hokage tried to find something to distract himself. Briefly he considered one of those colorful books that Jiraiya had sent him. Suddenly, with a cloud of smoke, the copy ninja appeared in the Hokage's office, just as the seasoned shinobi had built up enough courage to start reading his previous student's novel. You wanted to see me, Hokage-sama? The silver-haired man asked. Yes Kakashi I wanted to talk to you about Naruto. Saratobi replied. Did you know that he was attacked last night? He questioned. What happened? Is he alright? Shocked at the piece of news, the Jounin immediately asked in concern. Then, after a second, anger at his student being attacked started to set in. Who did it? He asked, expecting it to be one of those brainless villagers that still viewed Naruto as a demon. The answer he received surprised him even more than the news that one of his genin students was attacked within the past 24 hours. Saratobi looked directly into Kakashi's eye and responded. Ichihara Tachi. Needless to say, it took the Hayate's brain a couple of seconds to process the fact that an S-rank criminal had attacked one of his students. You can't be serious, Hokage-sama. Ichihara Tachi attacking Naruto? How could that happen? The Hokage looked at the copy ninja with a bit of disappointment. It seems that after you team meeting, Naruto was feeling a bit distraught so he decided to take a break from the ignorance of the villages and fell asleep outside the village. He informed. It was when he was making his way back that he was attacked by the missing nin, Ichihitachi. Saratobi explained. Kakashi kept silent for a few moments. He knew too well what the sandame had meant by distraught. Hokage-sama, you have to understand I feel it is my obligation with Ibido Sasuke is from the same clan, and he needs somebody to train him on his bloodline. The silver-haired man tried to get his point across. And I believe that I am the best choice, since I'm the only one who still have a Sharingan and is still affiliated to the village. He said in his defense. The third simply shook his head in response. So you owe to you fallen teammate? He reiterated the point that the younger shinobi had tried to make. What about your sensei? You do know that Naruto is his son, do you not? The Hokage asked. The copy ninja looked down at the floral. He was one of the few people that actually knew that Naruto was the Yandame's son, though he never knew who the mother was, but still he could not help but feel that his debt with Ibido was far larger. I know, Hokage-sama, but still, Sasuke is that last of Ibido's clan. He would have wanted me to train him. The Jounin desperately wanted to explain himself. By now, the Hokage was beginning to get angry. You think that Ibido would have wanted you to focus only on training Sasuke? Saratobi's eyes worry a combination of anger and disappointment. Please, do not insult his memory. The comment hurt Kakashi. How could the Hokage even think that he would do anything to insult his teammate's mommery? But Kakashi did not have time to voice his opinion as the sandame started again. First Ibido would not even think of giving one student preference over another, that is something that your sensei tried to teach you. He began. Second, your tea is the exact image as your old one. You have a famous teacher, except that in this new team the instructor seems to like playing favorites, you have a prodigy, a girl who tries to keep everyone together, and a boy that some consider thrash, but actually has incredible potential. The Dred stated. Now tell me, who has Abito's position in this team? Saratobi questioned. Kakashi was silent for a few seconds. Slowly, the shame that he felt started to turn into anger. So you want me to leave Sasuke and go train Naruto, since he's your favorite the copy ninja did not ask. No I just want you to stop saying that it is because of Ibido. The Hokage stated firmly. 
the truth is that you want to train Saz K simply because of his natural talent and because he reminds you of how you used to be. The Sandame said, raising his voice. It's not that. Kakashi tried to defend himself. Yes it is. The third insisted. Because if you would have had the slightest bit of interest in Naruto, you would have found out that you owed a bit to take care of him. The Hokage said. Deep in his heart, the seasoned shinobi was going to enjoy seeing Kakashi's face after the Jounin heard what he was about to reveal. What do you mean? The silver-haired man asked with caution. Saratobi continued to stare down the younger man. You never bothered to find out who Naruto's mother was, did you Kakashi? The Hokage questioned. Now Kakashi was confused. What does Naruto's mother have to do in all of this? The copy ninja asked. If you had bothered to investigate, you would have found out that Naruto's mother was a Chihakagam. The Sandame finished. The silver-haired man was surprised once again. That piece of information had shocked him beyond anything that they had talked about until then. You don't mean the man said weakly. Yes, Naruto's mother was a Chihabito's sister. The Hokage responded. Naruto is your fallen teammate's nephew. He's more connected to that eye of Yoru than Sasuke could ever be. Saratobi revealed. Kakashi sat down as his shock had not subsided completely. The silver-haired shinobi brought his hand up to his covered eye. How could he have done this? How could he have done this to Naruto? To Abito? To his own sensei? Does he have a Sharingan? Kakashi finally asked. Even thought the Hokage would have very much enjoyed telling the Jounin the truth, he had already promised Naruto that he would not. No he answered. You know that the Namakas and the Achaya clan were very different. I do not think that Naruto would be able to activate it, since it seems that his Namaka's heritage have overpowered the Achiha. Kakashi nodded numbly. And you do not have to worry about Naruto's training anymore. The third continued. From now, until the Chunin exam starts, I will be supervising his training. The Sandame finished. The copy ninja nodded once again and asked to be dismissed. The Hokage knew that Kakashi had a lot to think about and decided to let him go. The silver-haired Jounin walked aimlessly through the village four hours. It was almost six o'clock in the afternoon, around the time when rain started to fall, that Kakashi found himself in front of the memorial stone. The man fell on his knees and started the name Ichihabito. I'm sorry he muttered. The Hokage is right the reason why I wanted to train Sasuke was because he's a prodigy and I've been using your name as a way to justify myself. The Jounin admitted. And to top it all, I ignored and neglected Naruto my student your Nephau sensei's son he chalked for a second. I failed you and Minato sensei please forgive me. Kakashi begged and finally started his way home. On the way, tears fell from Botha's eyes and beneath his headband. It was the morning of the Chunin exam and Naruto was currently at the Hokage's office. The Sandame had called him to the tower earlier that morning, telling him that he needed to meet him right away. Five minutes later, the blonde was knocking on the Hokage's window, and now he was waiting around as the seasoned shinobi searched the room for something. Ah! Here it is! Saratobi exclaimed as he held the scroll. Naruto noticed that the Namaka's clan symbol was imprinted on the scroll seal. What is that, old man? The genin asked, looking at the parchment with curiosity. Well, since you have done so well in your training and learned very single jutsu in the scrolls I gave you, I have decided to you this. He signaled to the scroll. Think of it as a present for all of your hard work. The Sandam gave the young man the parchment. It is a summoning scroll for an ancient weapon. The third explained. Only a member of the Namaka's clan are able to summon it and use it. The Hokage said smiling. The hand seals necessary for the summoning are inside as well. Naruto opened his present. Inside were the series of hand seals needed, a bunch of stuff they ignored, and some sort of symbol, similar to the Namaka's insignia as its center. Normally, you would need to carry the scroll everywhere and use it to perform the summoning Judas by placing a bit of your blood into the seal. The third commented. But since this is a specific clan Judas, you can replace the scroll with a summoning tattoo in fact, if you hurry, you could get the tattoo done before the Chunin exam starts, Naruto-kun. The Hokage said, smiling at the young shinobi. The spiky-haired blonde closed the scroll and looked at the Hokage. Thanks old man. The Jinchuriki said with a half a smile as he turned around and jumped out of the window. Several hours later, Sasuke, Sakura, and Kakashi were standing outside room 301, waiting for the last member of their team. Kakashi-sensei, where is Naruto? Sakura asked. The exam begins in a few minutes and he still hasn't shown up.
The Achiha was pacing in the hall anxiously. Is he coming? The young man asked. I'm sure he is. The silver haired Jounin responded. He'll be here, don't worry he said, his eyes shifting back and forth, almost nervously. But before he does, there is something really important that I need to talk to you two about. He suddenly started again. It's about Naruto you see, during this past month he has sort of changed. The man informed. What do you mean, Kakashi-sensei? Sakura asked in confusing. How did he change? Kakashi did not really how to answer the girl's question. The Hokage had only said that Naruto was not the same anymore, but he had not given any specifics, and the silver-haired shinobi had been unable to muster enough courage to face the spiky-haired boy during the previous month. In fact, the famed Nin was not sure if he would be able to face him now. Before the Jounin had time to make up an answer for the pink-haired Kanoichi's question, all three leaf nins heard footsteps come from down the hall. All three turned around to see who was coming, they tried to figure out who was walking towards them, but it was not until they saw the whisker marks on his face that they recognized him. Naruto Sakura said in a low voice. The two genin were left dumbfound. Their teachers saying that the blonde had changed was a massive understatement, since, from their perspective, it seemed that the boy had undergone a complete transformation. His orange jumpsuit and blue sandals were gone, now the spiky-haired teen wore a pair of black sandals, dark blue pants, a navy color undershirt, and a black long-sleeve jacket over it. A spiral symbol was present on the backside of his jacket and on the shoulder, and his hair had grown a lot longer during the last month, since it almost covered his leaf headband now. Naruto passed them without saying a single word. The only proof of acknowledgement between the members of Team 7 was the small second in which the blonde genin looked directly at his teammate's eyes. When the Jinchuriki was in front of the door, he stopped and looked back. It's time for us to enter. Naruto said with a monotonous voice as he pushed the door open. All three genin entered the testing room. Immediately, they were welcomed with the glares from all other participants. Sasuke kun Suddenly, a blue and yellow appeared on Team 7's field of view and latched itself onto the Achiha. Anger started to seep into Sakura right away. Stop bothering Sasuke-kun, Ino Pig. Sakura shouted at the girl that was hugging the raven-haired boy. This is so troublesome. A black-haired boy said lazily as he approached the group while a boy eating potato chips followed fight behind him. Naruto, who was not paying much attention to the two girls bickering, turned his gaze towards his former classmate Shikamaru and Chaoji, as they stood before the group for a second, before looking back up to the roof. Whoa! I that Naruto? I can't be. He never looked so serious or stood so quiet before the Nara though as he regarded the blonde leaning against the wall. Well it seems that the rookie nine are all together again. An arrogant voice was heard as Kiba made his way towards the others, his dog, Akamaru, barking from inside of the boy's jacket. Behind the Inuzuka were, a blue-haired girl with pale eyes and a boy wearing sunglasses. Hinata and Shino followed the hidden teen as he reached the group. Kiba took a second to look at everyone. Hold on a second. He suddenly said. Where is the dobe? I don't see him anywhere. The brown-haired boy wondered out loud. It was at that moment that the member of the Rookie Nine felt a strong aggressive presence spike up in the room. All of their eyes turned to the source, and, for the first time, that the rest of teams 8 and 10, noticed the blonde leaning against the wall. Naruto. Is that you? Kiba called out. Do you changed? The Inuzuka said as he walked towards the spiky-haired boy. The hidden teen stopped on his track the moment his eyes met Naruto's. A cold chill went down the brown-haired boy's back. Hey billboard brow, what happened to Naruto? Ino asked in a whisper as she moved closer to her former best friend. The pink-haired girl bit her lips. I don't know Ino pig. She answered. It's the first time that I've seen him in a month something must have happened during that period of time. The Haruno said. You guys are really causing a bad first impression. A grey-haired leaf nin wearing glasses said as he walked towards them. Especially the blonde one with the attitude. Sasuke immediately stepped forward. And who are you supposed to be? The raven-haired boy asked the older shinobi. My name is Yukushi Kabuto. The young man responded. And you guys should try to keep a low profile you are the rookie nine after all, already infamous around here, and this year's bunch is pretty tense as it is. He commented as he glanced around the room. In all my year of taking these exams, I've never seen such a touch group of genins brought together. The younger nins looked around as well. All they found were glares. For example Kabuto started again. 
you have the team from Hidden Rain, they're extremely irritable not to mention the Genins from Suna, especially the one with the gourd on his back, he gives me the creeps. The grey-haired teen admitted. You seem to know a lot about this exam. Sakura commented with curiosity. Well, that comes with the territory when this is your seventh time taking the exam Kabuto said, blushing slightly in embarrassment and scratching the back of his head. But each try bring new things. He said as he compassed himself. Like the team from Atagakur, it's the first time in this exam, and they just get to send one team since they're such a small village. The grey-haired Genin informed. Suddenly, someone from the crow threw a pair of kunai at Kabuto. The leaf genin was able to dodge them with ease, but then a boy covered in bandaged appeared right in front of the grey-haired genin and swung his fist forward at the Kanohinin's face. Just barely, Kabuto was able to move his head back and evade that attack as well. When everything seemed fine, the leaf genin's blast suddenly broke and he started spewing blood from the mouth and the ears. Don't think lightly of this sound. The bandaged boy said as a girl with long hair and boy with blue hair walked forward and stood by him. Yeah. By the end of the exam all three of us Odonin will be the boy started to say, but suddenly stopped when he felt something on the back of his neck. Between him and the bandage genin stood Naruto with a kunai held up to both of their necks. I think that the two of you should calm down. The blonde said in a monotonous tone. Unless you want to start something Naruto finished, pushing the blades even closer to their necks. Guys, I will stop here, I hope did you enjoy this video, if you do please leave a like, share and subscribe, thanks for watching video, bye.